Evelyn to Philip, July 31st, 1944. Dearest Phil, it is 20 minutes to 6, and I have completed all my work, giving me ample time to get a letter off to you, even if it does have to be a shorty. I am very tired again today, as I was up with Adele all night long. I sure will be glad when those teeth come through. Shortly after posting my letter to you, I showered and went to bed. As soon as I became comfortable, I heard a familiar voice. Ruth had just blown into town and will be here for a few days. Naturally, I slipped into a house coat and came down to see her. Phil, she looks grand, getting better looking all the time, as well as thinner. She brought Adele a huge stuffed blue and white doll that must have set her back at least $7. She also brought a box of chocolate-covered saltwater taffies. We chatted a while, and then I just couldn't keep my eyes open, so up I went to rock Adele and keep her from crying. She was annoyed all night long, and I was exhausted carrying her about. I simply let her cry herself to sleep when I became too tired. She did sleep for a few minutes, or possibly a half hour at a time, which is better than nothing at all, I guess. Today, Harry and Goldie had a nice letter from my brother, Eddie, and I had a letter from Seymour. Sai is getting commando in amphibious training, and somehow I don't like it. From his descriptions, it isn't a safe branch at all. God, what luck the Pallers have. Ruth was supposed to take my mom back with her, but my mom isn't going. Not, however, at the moment. I do have every intention of taking a week's vacation, regardless of whether I have to stay home or not. So far, my mom plans to go down the shore on August 28th, which undoubtedly will be the week I'll take off. Mom received your Jewish letter and, as per usual, cried herself silly. She asked me to tell you to forgive her for not writing that, quote, you know how it is, end quote, and that she'll get around to it eventually. I love you, dear, Ev. Jack Nirenberg, Phil's friend, July 31st, 1944. Dear Phil, there I was, panning the dust after sweeping the darkroom floor, when Marilyn entered after I said, come in, in answer to her knock. As I looked up at her from my stooped position, my eyes must have shown in reflection of all the sweetness that was embodied in the figure that stood above me. For what then could have made her scoop me up into her arms to be half crushed in the most endearing hug this lucky person has ever had the pleasure of being principal to? Phil, I've now tasted of spiritual love in even the matter that belittles your description or anyone's feeble attempts to put it into words. I thought I should like to try describing it to you but the tantamount heights of supreme bliss Evelyn has made you partner to is explanation enough. Page two. Our feelings that only true love can inspire are so mutual that it still astounds us to realize how easily one can describe the other's emotions by the simple expedient of mirroring his own. Yet, Phil, I have braced myself for the possibility of not marrying her due to the circumstance that eventuates of our difference in religion. She is a Baptist. The thrill I encountered when hand in hand we walked down the aisle to seat ourselves at Jewish services can never be measured. She has asked me to teach her to read in Hebrew. Of course, the Sunday morning following that Friday night found me at her services in acceptance of the arrangement I had proposed. It was a little difficult, I'll admit, but never, never as difficult as it would be for both of us if a future Yom Kippur or Christmas wistfully passed us by without our having been to a synagogue and a church. After the first time, 
the second, we've only come upon two weekends thusly, was easier. We both looked forward to having a sweetheart seated. Page three, and next at one another's services. There's a joke there about um, the author's license for using the word and next, which isn't really a word. Yesterday, Sunday, alone together, we summited by 31 Chevy, a mountain road that rises at least 3,000 feet in six miles. I then made an attempt at the impossible, that of capturing on color film the soul-inspiring beauty that too few mortals are privileged to behold, which confronted us in a panorama of brilliance that can form only from mountaintops, trees, grass, sunlit clouds, shaded trees, and the presence of your loved one. Yes, we did then kiss. Then, as we lay on the grass, and I skyward marveled at nature's ability to dissolve and compose fleecy clouds at will. We were at peace on this earth. The fleet wind broke the spell, but not harshly, for as Marilyn lifted her head to be silhouetted against the sky, the very same wind patterned her hair in a fashion that heartwarmingly made real every love song ever written. Then, as the clouds became tinged with the dusky colors that a westering sun imparts, page four, and as the mountain ridges took for themselves the highlights with which so shortly before they shared with the trees, we knew that day was waning. However, there was yet to be a fitting close to these just past hours of loveliness. As we seated ourselves in the car and my arms cradled Marilyn, our eyes met as she said to me, I wish I could have known your mom. The perceptive lump in my throat, which was thus evoked, then caused her to say the words that endeared her to me even more, if that is possible. Go ahead, Jack, cry if you want to. Then as I wiped away the tears, her, I love you all the more for it, made it seem impossible that such as we should not wed. I think it is impossible that we won't. I don't quite remember at what phase of the day we discussed the problem, but her solution is so simple it is astounding. We would expose our children to the teachings of the Baptist and the Hebrew. When they feel a definite leaning towards either, if they do, then they can embrace it only. Their way will be acceptable to us unconditionally, for haven't we accepted the same in the final analysis? Page 5. Today, at my request to Lenny, Marilyn received a letter from him. It will ever cause me to be thankful to him. It was that beautiful in its tone of acceptance of her to be loved by us all. Tomorrow, or a tomorrow to come, Marilyn's folks will accept me. My prayers cannot go unheeded. Wish me luck as you accept my wishes for a happy homecoming and my love for all of your loved ones. As ever, your pal. Jackie.